BDEW Kongress 2015. Podcast. Die Energieunion. Sichere, nachhaltige, wettbewerbsfähige und bezahlbare Energie. Marosch Ševčovič, Vizepräsident Energieunion, Europäische Kommission, Brüssel, Belgien. Dear Madame Miller, members of the Parliament, uh, ladies and gentlemen, at first I, I promise you one thing, I will, I will do my best English this morning, but I'm still afraid I cannot replace Her Majesty. So you have, you have to stick with me. You know? <laughs> and uh, thanks to Madame uh, Miller's introductory statement and also to the debate, which I was uh, listening just a minute ago, I think I have to really rework a lot uh, of my speech. So I will improvise a little bit because some of the topics which have been raised and put on the table, I think would really deserve uh, uh, some comments from my side. So I'll try to, uh, to combine my original speech with some of the topics which have been proposed by Madame Miller, but also my, uh, my predecessors at, uh, uh, on, on, the, on the stage. At first, when I was listening to uh, Madame Miller, I, I have to say that that type of a debate uh, uh, which you have uh, in Germany is taking place uh, everywhere in Europe. How to integrate renewables, how to make sure that our energy costs are, are under control, how to make sure that we go through this uh, very demanding energy uh, transition and keep the competitiveness uh, of our economy how to address the issue of the energy poverty and how to do it in the full respect uh, of our climate uh, change policies. So these were the topics which have been very much bubbling on the surface of, of the political debates in, in Europe already for some time. And we've been trying on national level, on European level, to address these issues. I have to say, most of the time, partially, one topic at a time, one aspect uh, at, at, the, at the particular moment. But what we didn't have uh, was that holistic, comprehensive approach and that, that, that pressure and motivation. So let's not try to find all the answers on, only within our national borders. Let's, let's enlarge a little bit that scope, that territory, that space in which we are looking for the answers. Let's look, let's look at the regional cooperation. Let's look at the European level. And I think that uh, what was the problem of the past was that uh, um, energy is still seen very much uh, in the national mindset. It's still seen very much as a national competence, even though since the Lisbon Treaty, we know that this competence is shared in Europe. And uh, therefore, I think we kind of feel that there is a tendency, the need to look for the European solutions. But we needed that political momentum to get us there, to, to start this deep discussion. And I think it, it came last year when suddenly we realized that uh, the peace is not as strong as we believed in Europe, that energy security is not as secure as we hope uh, it is, and, and suddenly the, the, the conflict in the eastern Ukraine kind of put it into the bigger uh, perspective uh, for our political leaders, for our, uh, for our uh, political elites, and for the citizens as well. The element of the energy security was the last one, the last straw, which kind of created the political momentum, which was very important uh, to make sure that uh, from now on, we should try to find the comprehensive, holistic solutions to all that energy-related issues. Then the question was, of course, how to do it? Because until like, you know, 10 years ago, and I know that you are all here uh, professionals, so I do not have to describe it to you, but more or less when you've been discussing the energy, You've been discussing how to generate it, how to produce it, how to distribute it, how to consume it. That was the basic of the, of the energy policies. Later on, we had the climate change, climate action policies, integration on renewables. And then, of course, you realize that if you want uh, to deal with these issues comprehensively, you cannot forget about the transport. You have to include uh, the agriculture because of biofuels, because of uh, CO2 emissions. If you want to have energy security, you have to try to work on global governance. You need to have your trade people around you. And suddenly, you realize that you need strong team with different disciplines which would be taking care of this very important energy transition. And this is uh, the way uh, we, we approach uh, the energy union concept. One, it was clear that it becomes one of the top priorities for the whole EU 
for the for the next for the next years. Once it, once it was included in all the programming uh, documents and political priorities of the new European Commission, we attempted this for the first time to have holistic, comprehensive approach how to manage this very deep energy transition. So we put together the team of uh, 14 commissioners uh, from energy and climate to transport uh, and uh, regional development from uh, uh, DG ECFIN towards uh, Margaret Vestager, who is responsible for the state aid. So we can really uh, include all aspects uh, which are important for having meaningful energy policies. And therefore, we also decided that we cannot focus only on one dimension. We need to have a good progress across the, the whole chessboard uh, important for the energy. We need to make sure that we have uh, uh, much better uh, and much secure energy supplies, that uh, we progress much faster and we will be much more thorough if it comes to the completion of the internal energy market, that we use that European uh, potential and uh, that great technologies we have here to moderate uh, the demand because we can achieve much more through energy efficiency. And then we can do this all in a, in a framework which we set for ourselves if it comes uh, to the energy and, uh, and climate goals for EU 2020 and EU 2030. And we will be doing this with the strong support of our scientific research and innovation base in Europe. That's the concept of the energy union. This is the, the five dimensions. Of course, the, the start and good start is very important. I think we've got it also thanks to the uh, support uh, of you, representatives of the industry, thanks to the support of uh, German government and other governments in, in, in Europe. But now we are moving into the, into the next phase. Now we are moving from the start, from that, uh, uh, from that conceptual, com uh, con concept uh, preparing phase into the implementation. And then, of course, as you know very well, more difficult one. So what, what we are doing right now? The first thing, we are trying to consolidate the support for the concept of the, of the energy union. We are trying to explain why we need it, what kind of advantages it brings uh, to Europe and to each uh, member states. Therefore, I'm, I, I'm traveling across the Europe. Therefore, I'm here because I'm kind of campaigning uh, for, the, for the energy union, and I want to make sure that this is seen as a, as a, as a joint concept, that, uh, that the ownership for this process uh, must be common, because I'm absolutely uh, sure, I know, and I'm sure that you would agree with me, that energy union cannot be built uh, in Brussels. It has to be built here, in Germany, here in Berlin, in Leipzig, in your cities, in your towns, uh, in our villages across the European Union. It has to be built by you, by the industry. It must be accepted and supported by our citizens, and we need to have that collective support for this very important uh, energy and uh, economic transition. Second track, which is also uh, very, very important, uh, concerns our, our uh, diplomatic efforts, because uh, it's very clear that, uh, uh, as it was uh, said uh, here, we need also other parts of the world to do their bit in fighting climate change. Therefore, we are working very hard uh, on making sure that uh, in Paris, at this COP21 conference, uh, we will have a global ambitious binding agreement that uh, Europe for sure will remain the front runner, Europe for sure will remain the, the leader in these efforts, but that also other global players uh, would act responsibly will pitch in and will contribute uh, to what is necessary to, to preserve uh, uh, our planet as we know it today and to hand it over to the future generation in, in, in better states uh, than, than we receive it. Therefore, we are doing our utmost to make sure that others will join our efforts of you, the industrialists, would have a more level playing field uh, um, for entrepreneuring, for doing business here in Europe or elsewhere in, uh, on, the, on, the, on the global market. Second part of our diplomatic efforts, of course, is very much uh, oriented as uh, securing the energy supply, to have much higher energy security than we have uh, today. How you want to achieve it? I would say that there is one key word for that, and this is diversification. We want to make sure that uh, the supplies of uh, energy to Europe are more diversified than today. We want to make sure that each country in, in the EU 
would have access to at least three different uh, sources of gas. We want to make sure that also our neighbors in the Western Balkans, Moldova, Ukraine would be part of these efforts so we can, we can share the, uh, the benefits of uh, being in the biggest uh, uh, economic uh, market uh, in the world. And we just want to explore all possibilities how we can enlarge the portfolio of energy imports to Europe. We are working very hard uh, on Southern Gas Corridor, which is a huge uh, construction work uh, leading to the building up of a pipeline of 3,800 kilometers, costing 45 billion US dollars, and uh, will be bringing the gas from Caspian Basin to Europe before 2020. It's a strategic tool, strategic asset in the region, which is very rich with the hydrocarbons. The Turkmenistan is very much interested to be part of it. You know uh, that very close uh, to this area is Iran, it's Iraq, and what we need is diplomatic breakthrough that we would be actually having this strategic asset in the, in the region from which uh, you have enormous possibilities to import the gas. We also uh, are developing our cooperation in the Mediterranean basis. Algeria is the third largest uh, um, uh, importer of gas. There are new reserves found between Israel and, and Cyprus, and all these are opportunities uh, for the future. Getting closer to the Europe, I have to say that for the first time, Norway was uh, the number one gas uh, supplier in the first quarter of this year. And I think it's a, a very important signal because with Norway, we have excellent relations. We have no tensions whatsoever. And uh, our, our relationship is very close. It's uh, commercially based and, it, and it's working perfectly. And this is something what we would like to achieve with Russia as well. Therefore, I am uh, negotiating with Russia and Ukraine to make sure that we would have this uh, trilateral protocol signed hopefully in the in near future to make sure that also next winter will be uh, as gas drama less as it was the last winter, that uh, we, would, we would make sure that there are no problems with the supplies uh, for Europe, with the supplies for Ukraine, and, and with the transiting of the gas uh, through, through Ukraine's territory. And I think that we need to engage with Russia in the debate on what should be such a global approach uh, concerning the volumes, concerning the routes uh, from which we get the gas uh, uh, from Russia to Europe. What is important for us it's that, you know, once you are in Europe, respect European rules, as our companies are respecting the rules when they are, when they are making business in other parts uh, of the world. So I hope that we will be able to engage in a rational, commercially, commercially based and mutually advantageous debate how to achieve it. Nevertheless, if you look at uh, the gas consumption estimates between now and uh, 2030, despite of our efforts uh, in, uh, in, in the climate uh, agenda policies, uh, still you would uh, need more or less uh, the same amount of gas as we, as we are consuming today. You will have the situation where the indigenous uh, production, uh, because uh, of the depletion of sources in the uh, Netherlands and in the Northern Sea, would decline. So we would need to have a uh, secure supply of gas also in the next, uh, uh, next years. We are exploring, therefore, all the possibilities uh, how the LNG could become a much bigger part of our energy mix. We have seen this year for the first time the price development, which is very interesting for Europe because spot price for LNG in Asia has been actually lower than uh, gas uh, pipeline prices in Europe. So the gas is slowly becoming the, the global, com uh, global commodity. We know that the price development is very volatile and therefore it's very difficult to make uh, long-term forecasts. Those who know it, they are apparently in this business and are doing very well. So uh, we just want to explore the possibilities uh, how we can enlarge our uh, energy supplies also by LNG and we will present the strategy to that effect uh, uh, in the autumn of uh, this year. But coming back uh, to Germany and coming back to the, to the, uh, to the, uh, to the energy union. Of course, uh, what is uh, very important uh, 
uh, what is very important is also how we want to put the, the energy union into the legislative frame, how we want to build it, how we want to make sure that we have this uh, strong uh, uh, legislative uh, uh, underpinning uh, for, uh, for this effort. So we are coming already uh, this year with the first uh, package of uh, legislative uh, initiative. And it would be quite important one because on the 15th of July, we would like to present uh, our proposal for reformed uh, emissions trading system. And I was listening very carefully to the previous speakers, and I think they've been all of them commenting on this issue. When I'm talking to, to the industry, very often what I hear from them is if you want to drive the innovation, if you want to drive the economic transition, fix the carbon price because current system is not operating well. With the price of seven euros per ton, it's very difficult to, to make the, the long-term investment and to go for the more innovative uh, technologies. So therefore, we've been working hard to make sure that we achieve agreement of market stability reserve, uh, which is kind of uh, removing 900 uh, million allowances and it's putting them deep into the freezer which allows us to, to reform the ETS in a way that it would perform well. It would respect our goals for, for 2030, and it would give back that uh, market signaling, that marketability of the system to, to determine the price, to give long-term regulatory uh, stability and necessary um, uh, signals for the investment in the energy and uh, uh, industry sector. We are also coming with the two very important uh, communications. Why communications? Because at first we would like to hear from you. We are going to present to you our ideas how to change uh, uh, electricity market design. And you know that this would be the landmark legislative proposal of the, of the next year. How to deal with the integration of renewables. How to uh, um, strengthen the demand uh, uh, demand side uh, management, how to deal with the capacity markets, how to make sure that uh, regional cooperation is uh, highlighted much more than before, and how we will put the energy efficiency first principle into the real operation. So these are all the key questions uh, to which we will offer you our initial thoughts, but at the same time, we will ask you for your contribution, for your own input, for your views. And we want to have that public consultations open for six months so that next year we can start to prepare legislative proposal because I think it would be one of the proposals which would uh, decide how successful we will be in the energy transition, how successful we would be with uh, reforming our electricity market. We are also coming with a communication which is called New Deal for Consumers. Because I think that we are now at the stage, as it was discussed uh, 10 minutes ago, when the consumers want to become more and more prosumers. It brings a lot of possibilities. It creates the, the involvement uh, of the citizens, of the consumers, into the decisions on uh, how to consume uh, uh, the energy which uh, naturally usually leads to lower consumptions, to more rational choices, and we should just create the possibilities. I mean, the, the legislative, but also technical ones, how to apply these smart solutions to, to those citizens who would like to use the, the, uh, these, uh, these smart uh, uh, technologies. And we will, pro we will come up also with a, a review of energy labeling uh, uh, um, uh, directive because uh, it's very clear that uh, the legislation we have already in place uh, right now was working very well, but it needs to be updated because of the technological progress. Very often when you uh, speak about energy labeling and eco-design, I'm getting um, a lot of difficult questions, but I have to say mostly from the journalists because consumers and industry like the system, they like uh, the harmonized approach and, and they appreciate the fact that thanks to this legislation, we are going to save until 2020 the amount of electricity which is consumed by Italy in one year. So it's a not mean result. I think it's an excellent result which we, which we, which we received uh, uh, through this common approach uh, to make our electric appliances very competitive one 
which are now uh, very often very much uh, uh, thought after in international markets and where we really, uh, the Europeans are the benchmark setters for energy efficiency and for the quality, quality, quality of the product. In the autumn, we would like to present to you the new plans uh, for research and innovation in so-called strategic uh, um, uh, research uh, in energy plan, so-called set plan, where we would like to suggest how we are going to use that significant amount of money we allocated under research and innovation program Horizon 2020 for the research and innovation in energy. It's almost 6 billion euros, and we need to be sure that we are channeling them into the right direction so we could see the results, and not only in labs, but we would see the market uptake of these technologies, and we would see it here in Europe, and not in China, not in the States. That we would benefit not only from the research, but also from the implementation of, uh, of these innovative, uh, uh, innovative results uh, in Europe. And then, uh, by the end of the year, we will present uh, to you, as I said, LNG strategy, but also security of the gas uh, supply uh, directive revision, because we have to learn from the past. We did the gas uh, stress test uh, over the last years. We know the results. We know what we need to fix. We know what we need to improve. And that would be the result uh, of uh, our proposal, where also we would like to include uh, what the leader has been calling for. And this is uh, more transparency in contracts, more transparency uh, in uh, negotiations of intergovernmental agreements. So that's the menu for this year, but the next year would be equally challenging because we have to deal with uh, transport, it's decarbonization, we have to deal with non-ETS uh, sector, and I'm sure that on all of this we would have uh, very deep uh, uh, discussions with you because we want to make sure that uh, in this uh, particular uh, area we are doing the right thing and we will not uh, do any mistakes because we understand how regulatory stability and uh, the good decisions are, are very, very important. If you uh, allow me uh, to spend uh, a few minutes uh, on, uh, on Germany, because of course uh, your contribution to the all European efforts in the field of building up of the energy union, in the field of this energy and uh, economic uh, transition, transition would be absolutely, would be absolutely uh, crucial. The size of your economy, your, your geographical uh, locations, your commitment uh, uh, to decarbon decarbonizations and your results uh, in uh, these energy transitions are all very key factors for the overall European success. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I, I visited uh, regions of uh, Niedersachsen and, Nor and the Northern Netherlands, the region of Groningen, and I have seen how also on regional level, this cooperation is very important. Uh, how the universities are responding uh, to the labor market by preparing new energy and climate experts, how new technologies are developed in your, uh, in your labs uh, in, in Oldenburg. And what you can see there is just absolutely amazing. And uh, therefore, when we are talking about uh, these targets, and I fully understand uh, the certain caution and uh, the, 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 the deep considerations uh, how far and how fast we could go. But when you see what's going on in the research and innovation in your country, in Netherlands, and in, uh, in some uh, other countries, so I think that we are very close to the, uh, to the moment when we could see in uh, the energy transformation, energy trans transition, the same development we have seen uh, in uh, internet and uh, digitization area just few years ago. So therefore, if it comes uh, to all these uh, challenges and all the targets of the future, I'm very convinced that technology will bring us new solutions, new breakthroughs, and we actually by 2030 would be looking at 2015 and, and, and think that, you know, at that time um, we understand why, but uh, the guy's been very, very cautious because, of course, it's very difficult to foresee what happens in five or ten years, but when we have a look 
how much progress we achieve in a, in a digital area over the last 15 years, I believe that we can have something similar in energy transition and in the development of the, of the, of the, new, of the new technology. And I, I've seen how impressive this is at the Hanover Messe, which I visited this year, and I was in the tour together with the, with the Chancellor Merkel, and I have seen how Indian Prime Minister Modi was interested in, in exactly these uh, clean tech uh, products. Because, of course, if you want to give electricity to the 300 million people in India who do not have uh, the regular access to electricity, you have to think how you are going to do it. Are you going to do it in the old-fashioned way and simply uh, create a huge problem with the air pollution? Or you are going to look for next technologies which are available, which are clean, which are more efficient, and which are, which are better for your country? And of course, the, the choice is obvious. And therefore, I believe that our efforts in Europe into these new technologies, uh, into this uh, green, clean tech, is something which should give us that advantage of the prime mover of that uh, uh, technological avant-garde as, uh, as, as a trendsetter, able to produce the products and offer the solutions which actually bring a lot of export potential for our company. We are very often in Europe complaining about the energy prices, and rightly so. They are very high if we compare them with the prices in the States for gas and for electricity. Uh, they are very high. And uh, very often when I discuss, especially with energy intensive industry, of course, they are very much worried about the carbon leakage and what this uh, will do uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the business model. If you would be very honest, and if you look across uh, the map, we can say that there was no carbon leakage over the last uh, few years, but what uh, we also have to recognize, there was investment leakage. That the investors, when they've been looking where to invest, especially in energy intensive uh, industries, they've been looking also at the results, at the profit margin, and very often the decision was taken that we like our operations in Europe, but we can get more profits elsewhere. Therefore, we need that uh, success uh, in Paris to make sure that we have a level, level playing field uh, across, uh, across uh, the globe. But what was a positive outcome of all this uh, energy transition effort was that our industry over the last years became twice as energy efficient as American one. That we are the first one in the, in the world which clearly demonstrated that you can decouple economic development from, uh, from the uh, greenhouse gas emissions. That we could grow since 1990 by 45%, but we could still decrease our CO2 emissions by 19%. And that's a model which I can tell you is studied very much also by other economies as something which has to be done, something which is uh, uh, needed for also uh, economic and energy transition elsewhere in the world. And one of the major customers for these solutions is China, uh, to whom uh, we are helping to develop their own energy trading system with our expertise, with our pilot uh, projects, and also with our financing. And, and uh, they would like to uh, start the, 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 the first testing phase of ETS uh, in 2017, which I think would be very important for, the, uh, for getting another very important uh, player into the system where you can actually give the, the, the market price, uh, market price uh, 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 to carbon. So a lot has been accomplished uh, in, uh, in Germany and, uh, and uh, in Europe, and still a lot has to be done. You know very well that uh, if it comes uh, 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 to the Germany, one of the issues which is very important to, to resolve uh, here is to remove uh, the bottlenecks which you have uh, for transport of clean energy sources from north uh, to the consumption center in the south. And, uh, of course, the interconnections uh, with, your, with your neighbors could also bring the big possibilities uh, for looking for the best, uh, most uh, economical solutions. Therefore, the attempts of Mr. State Secretary Bake to have this regional cooperation, to have this regional approach to, uh, to energy are also very supported by the, uh, by the, European, uh, by the European Commission. Uh, One of the key issues for the uh, success uh, in, 
in the future of the energy union would be your support uh, for, this, uh, for this whole process. Because it's very clear that, uh, that without support uh, of uh, the industry, without the support uh, of uh, the member states, it would be very difficult to make sure that we can make uh, this very important uh, energy transition. Therefore, if you allow me, I would uh, uh, conclude uh, by inviting you to engage with us in the European uh, Commission, be part uh, of uh, these debates of the public uh, consultations which we organize on all of these very important uh, uh, initiatives and I can assure you that uh, we will be listening very carefully because we are very aware of our responsibility. We want to make sure that we would, uh, we would offer solid uh, regulatory stability and that we are very much aware how your support uh, would be important uh, in the future. Thanks to Madam Miller, we already established very good cooperation uh, with uh, uh, BDW. They are always uh, organizing very useful but also very cheerful parties in Brussels. And uh, I had a chance to participate in a couple of them. And thanks to the information and the good atmosphere which is always created there, I will be very happy when we can have uh, another meeting here or in Brussels. So thank you very much for your kind attention and thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity to explain to you what we do in Brussels and what we very much want to do with you here in Berlin or in other cities in Germany. Thank you very much. Weitere Informationen und Podcasts unter bdew.de/kongress.